And so moving on to the next uh, next slide here. Uh, this is another from one of the PT3 uh, flyers. Uh, since 2007, operating expenditures have exceeded operating revenues. Now we get a little confused here because down in their, their wording on that same flyer, it kind of is apples to oranges, and then at one time the next time it's apples to apples. So we're not too sure how they're trying to compare point this out. So here they show program revenues and operating expenditures. Up here in their wording they say um, operating expenditures have out, out, out exceeded operating revenue. So we're a little confused but we're going to touch base on both of them for you so we, we, we can just set the line there. This is actually <clears throat> the graph that, that we asked Dean to, to put together based off the city financial numbers. The one thing that the PG3 left off their, their graph was sales and property tax revenue, and that's the biggest generator of funds in the city. We're not sure why that was left off and why they chose program ex, uh, expenses or program revenues to look at. We'll have Dean speak to this a little bit. But when you leave off that sales and, and uh, property tax revenue, it does show a discrepancy in the graph. Um. So I'll just point out a couple of things on this as well. Um, I guess, first of all, you know, if we look at the first graph that was out there that showed, had the four lines, I mean, it's quite a ways back, but the first graph that we showed that had, you know, Parks and Rec administration and public safety, those are really numbers that really match up the budget. In other words, government accounting is a little complicated. If you look at a set of financial statements, there's really two views of it. There's a view that kind of matches your budget, and what happened with everyday expenses. And then there's a view that, you know, as an accountant, I use the term full accrual. It has appreciation. It has um, a lot of different things in it that that, that, that first graph would have. And they, so this graph right here, or both of these, are based on those full accrual statements. And I think you have to be really careful using that information just in general. But I know when I talk to banks or talk to rating agencies, they really don't look at these uh, the government-wide statements is what we call them, these, these statements, just because there's things in there that, uh, that kind of can skew, skew things pretty easily. So, for example, if I look at, uh, so this blue line is expenses, I look at that peak right there, and you could say, well, geez, what happened in 2007? That's a crazy year. Like, well, how would the expenses go up by whatever, $18 million or something like that? Well, that just happens to be the year um, the city did the deal with, with Hammonds to do the hotel out there. So it's showing up there as an expense because because that's the year we acquired the land, but it wasn't a cash purchase, right? It was money that was government. The, the money to purchase that was done through tax increment financing, through bonds. And so to look at that and say, wow, that's really weird. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. If you look at a couple of these peaks, like this, this peak here, when I first saw that, I go, well, they must be related, right? Because they both peaked in the same year, and they're, and they're really not. Some things that, other things that are included in revenue here are, um, you know, as a developer, if you, if, if you come in and build a subdivision in the city and you put in roads and sidewalks and things like that, you're going to spend your money to do that. But um, when you're done with it, you're going to turn it over to the city. As a city, we have to, sh on these statements, not on the other ones, but on these statements, we show that as a revenue. And so I've had some people, even after they saw this graph, will say, well, geez, you had $6 million there. What did you do with that? Well, it's not really cash money. It's, it's uh, infrastructure that was a con contributed to the city, and it doesn't come in in a in a smooth level way. And so, you know, I would look at this and just say, you know, a lot of the things that we do as a city are funded through taxes, right? We fund police and hire through taxes. Obviously, when you call 911, they don't need you a bill. We don't send a bill in there. This, this exception is ambulances, but, um, and parks. Those things are just funded with taxes. So, all of those expenses are included in the blue line, so it seems only natural or accurate that you want to show the expenses that are going to pay for those things in the revenues. Dean, um, so I want, to, I want to go back one. If I, when I got this on my doorstep, it kind of scared me a little bit because, again, it's apples to oranges comparison here. And I can imagine it probably scared a lot of you. What is Pleasant Grove doing? How are they operating on a budget like and so, as you can see, and as we try to explain this, again, apples and oranges every time. And so, and we, I think we went to it a little bit, maybe we can talk to it again, is some of those increases is actually when you include property taxes and sales tax, it actually, again, it flips the chart around. But I'd like to maybe have uh, 
uh, Chief Sanderson and, and Dean talked a little bit about, again, bringing on the full-time fire department and the rec center and the cost associated with that. Well, just one of the things in cost of service, um, and when you look at the fire department as a whole, if you, if you look at it as a program, maybe what they were trying to get at, was that program cost $1.8 million. Well, the fire department only generates through ambulance billing, maybe $345,000 to $390,000 of revenue. So that's a program or a level of service that we are never going to be able to make whole. So it's always going to be subsidized based on the level of service that our community really should demand. And that's a full-time paramedic service. Yeah, so I uh, mentioned on fire department just in general, but Mark described it pretty well. We got a grant to do those uh, new firefighters, we hired them all at once, but the grant kind of gradually went away year over year, so, so that kind of took away. And I know this isn't mine here, but I'm going to say just something about the fire department in general. I mean, if you go back to 2007, that's a year we greatly increased the level of service for fire without increasing taxes or anything. That may be a mistake, and we should increase taxes at that time. I mean, I guess we're here then, but um, I've used, I used this example a few times, and and I just want, I don't know if it's appropriate here, but I just want to defend the full-time fire department, how important I think it is. Um, back before we had a full-time fire department, probably 2000, know, 2005, 2006, my, uh, my mom, who was, I don't know, 65 at the time, was walking down her stairs at her house, missed the last stair, fell, and it was one of those where you dislocate your foot, so it's pointing the wrong direction, and broke her ankle and everything, just extremely painful, right? And Mark was probably right, 17 to 20 minutes is probably about the time we called 911, and someone showed up quickly. Um, you know, and they had, I don't know, I don't know if, he had a box, right? And, but, it, but she wasn't in shock, she wasn't bleeding, she didn't need first aid, and so there really wasn't much you could do. The ambulance came um, five or six minutes later. Again, there really wasn't anything they could do at the time. So they put her on a stretcher, took her over to the hospital. So it was 30, 40 minutes before you know, she had any pain medication or anything. And we could say, well, in the long run, she's fine either way. But uh, I, I look at it today, if we call 911 today, especially where I live, uh, near the fire station, I think within two minutes, we'd have four paramedics there that would give her a reset of foot, give her medication, and, uh, and I guess it's fair to discuss which, which level of service we want, but, it, but clearly it's not the same level of service, right? And, and no taxes were raised or anything at the time. And I, I kind of said at the time that was probably a mistake. I think we should have raised taxes at the time to defend that level of service. But, um, but okay. that's just clearly an example of, of, uh, of where that service has gone.